Hello, my name is Selena. And my name is Theoni, and you are listening to Piping Hot. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Piping Hot. We are so excited that you've decided to join us on this wonderful day that you decided to listen. I don't know what day you're listening, but you were about welcome. To say, you were about to say Wednesday, but you're I know like, I wait, was. no, but it's not Wednesday. And then you're going to say Thursday, and you're like, but that doesn't make but sense. Exactly. So then you just exactly. said day. I, I saw like, the wheels spinning yeah. in your head. Honestly, any that. any day, I'll, I'll take. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I haven't talked to you, but I have. Like, we FaceTime earlier this week, but yeah. then as I was getting on the phone, I was like, when was the last time I talked to Theoni? Like, I was like... <laughs> I don't know. When... Yeah. I feel like, like I just talked to you. Yeah. Was it, like, Saturday or Sunday we FaceTime? And then I was... Something we've been like texting. that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? I don't um, know. <laughs> but what's, what's, new, what's new with you? Any life updates? Um, not too many, but... I, I have to be honest, okay, Uh-oh. <laughs> which you probably can't tell, but the past two weeks have been not so hot. Oh. I've just been in my head and just, like, not doing great mentally, and I'm just, mm. like, it's, it's fine. I'm, like, coming out of the fog, but it's the past two weeks, I'm, like what am I doing? I like haven't been getting a lot of sleep. There Mm -hmm. are a bunch of like, um, my dogs are having like a bunch of problems, like a bunch of bunch of problems. And so that with no sleep, with just like being in my head, like it's a horrible combination. If you're wondering, you know? (laughs) Yeah. No, seriously. I'm like, I know you said, Oh, it's fine. But like, I'm just reminding you, it's okay to not be fine. Like it's yeah. it's okay to have some weeks like that. And oh, just as yeah. a reminder, I'm always here for you. You can always call me or text me, <laughs> yeah. beat me if you want to reach me. But um, no, <laughs> I yeah, I totally get how you feel. Like sometimes things can just get too overwhelming, and then it's like yeah, I I swear it's like when your capacity goes down, then it's like all the existential stuff stuff starts coming up, and then yeah. it's like oh I don't know what I'm doing. I don't like anything. I don't know what's going on. And then it's just like a spiral and it's so hard. Yes. Yes. And then I just like sit at the bottom of that spiral and I'm like, what am I doing? Um, But I'm getting out. I'm getting out of it and it's all looking good. Um, Thankfully, it's going to be daylight savings this coming weekend. So the sun will just heal me, you know? Good. Yeah. No, literally. Vitamin D is so important. (laughs) I am yeah. deficient. My doctor told me so. I've been taking supplements. Yeah. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, Shit, like severely deficient. Like it, when I saw the number, I was like, oh, that's that's low. Like I, oh, yeah, I was like, up. oh, Seriously? I'm unwell. Yeah. So I've been taking a supplement every day. <laughs> Oh no. Oh yeah, no. but anyway, I sun is probably. great too. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah. how are Cora and Archie doing now, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, they're fine. We had another incident earlier this week, right? Okay. It's like um his like we went on a walk so it's been crazy warm here in minnesota okay. don't know about anywhere else across the country but it has been so warm here in minnesota and if you know minnesota it's supposed to be so snowy mm. right in at the end of february early march um it was like 60 degrees That's 70 crazy. degrees last weekend yeah and so we decided to take the dogs on a walk because we're like oh my god this is amazing we come back, and I don't know what Jack and I were doing. We were doing our own thing, and I see that Archie is, like, licking his paw. And Uh-oh. he does that all the time, so I'm yeah. like, whatever. It's fine. But this time, I could see that, like, he was, like, licking incessantly. And I'm like, oh, that's Something's weird. Something's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, hey, hey, like, let's let's stop. I lift his paw up, and it's just bloody. <gasps> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Jeez. Just bloody. Like, I, I don't even know what happened or what irritated it if he stepped on something outside like it was just bloody and i was like oh my god so we've been dealing with that and then and then cora's paw started to get bloody too and i'm like what What is happening right now i don't know i don't know um so yeah that has been this week i don't know what next week holds for the dogs but you know what i will let you know <laughs> yeah no keep me posted i'm sorry that's scary like, what the yeah heck? 
yeah it's just been like so like i just want them to be well yeah um and so yeah it's just been it's been long just trying to like take care of them and yeah. uh, make sure that they're okay but no, they're they're fine now yeah okay good um, okay, a couple of other life updates. Mm -hmm. So the last time that we talked, I was going to get my second tattoo, and I did. Mm -hmm. um, it looks fun, it looks, you guys. Yes. Yeah, I, I just love it. I think he does such a great job. I have to go back for a second session at the end of March to finish it up, but it's glorious, and I love it. Like, <laughs> money well spent, it's honestly. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like, I think you found someone who, like, knows what he's doing. Like, it's yes. so cool. Yeah, 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 I love his style, so. Um, okay, next thing is that I, we were just talking about it a little bit earlier, um, but I finished my second revision of my adult Ooh. fantasy, which I am so happy. This, it's been like pulling teeth. I will say the past two weeks, right, where I've been kind of in a funk mm -hmm. and a fog is kind of another reason why with this whole book, too, where it's like I like could not write for a whole week and mm. you know me i'm psycho i'm like doing like two two thousand three thousand uh words a day and yeah. so like not writing for a week it's like so bizarre so so bizarre and so weird i just like couldn't get myself to do it so i was like you know what i'm gonna finish it this week because yeah. i don't want to deal with it anymore <laughs> <laughs> relatable yeah honestly um so that's good. I'm going to take a little a little break and then yeah. dive back in, obviously. I'm sure it's amazing. I'm sure it is. <laughs> it's a hot mess right now, but that's okay. Um, and the last thing is that I went to book club last week with some friends, which was super fun. And then I'm grabbing drinks tomorrow um, for International Women's Day with some friends. So oh, that's so it's cute. All good. What the heck? Yes. It's all good vibes, right? Like, we're, yeah. we're coming out of the fog, okay? Good. good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you? What have you been up to? What have I been up to? Um, not a whole lot, honestly. Um, yeah. I... What have I been up to? Um, oh, this is an update. Guys, I finally finished my third revision that I've been talking about for literally six months. I finally yes! finished it. And I think I'm going to submit to this like open submission thing that Berkeley mm -hmm. Publishing is doing. And yes. so I just have to figure out how to write a summary or a yep. synopsis and a query letter, which, what the mm -hmm. heck? I was reading yours, and they're so good. And I'm like, how, how am I supposed to summarize an entire book on a page? Like, And, and what do you include? What do you not include? Yeah. Like, oh so yeah. I've been trying to work on that. Um, nice. But I'm very <laughs> proud of myself that I finally did it. Yes. <sighs> I love that. That was such a long time coming. Like, what hey, the heck? Hey, but that's okay, right? Yeah. Like, you did it. It's done now. And, yeah. you know, on to better things. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that, yeah. like, writing a query letter in a synopsis, it's, it's, like, a whole different art. Like, it's yeah. not, like, writing. It's so different, and that's mm -mm. why I hate it. That's why yeah, I hate it's it. It's so – ugh. I just don't like it. I yeah. don't like it. I don't know yeah, what to write. Same, so it's probably going to be trash, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's been going on. Um, I'm trying to think if I've done – anything like super exciting i feel like i haven't like gone out and done a bunch i've done more like yeah. chill things with people so like Good. movie nights things like that nice. um yeah honestly not a whole lot work has been pretty busy um i've been oh, yeah. so tired lately but but like literally what else is new so yeah. <laughs> we'll see i've been like taking multiple naps a day but we'll yeah. We'll get there. We'll get caught up yeah. eventually. Who knows? Um, but yeah, life is life is pretty chill right now overall. Good. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> it's like so weird that it's already March. I like, know. How are we three months into 2024? I actually I, don't know. I don't it know. makes me want to throw up. So me too. <laughs> anyways, um, what are you reading, watching, listening to, consuming? Or no, not yes. consuming. <gasps> Rip. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Rip that segment. Sorry. Um. So starting off with reading, so I finished Gideon the Ninth, which I had mentioned the last time that we recorded. Hmm. It was so good. This is oh. why I do not DNF books because the ending was insane, literally so insane. Like I, I just I like it. It's haunting me still. Like I think about Dang. it all the time, every day. And it's just I'm so excited to like continue reading this series, yeah. but like I. 
I'm just, like, still thinking about the ending and, like, what <laughs> happened. Like, this is why I don't DNF, yeah. okay? Like, it's, it's because it's, like, hard to get through. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have to finish it, right? And then you yeah. get to the climax and it's so good. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> super fun. Um, currently, I'm reading Her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth Lim, which mm. is a young adult fantasy. I've read a bunch of her books and I yeah, love I was it. Gonna it's say, just... I recognize the author. Yes, it's her books are just like candy to me. I just mm-hmm. love it so much. And it's really got me out of my reading and writing slump. So that's oh, been really good. nice. Um, and then I am also doing a buddy read of Bride by Allie Hazelwood, which I think I'll finish today, actually. What do you um, think so far? <laughs> the only, oh, the only, no. The it's only, bad, I, isn't it? I, 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 it's hard to keep defending Allie Hazelwood it's yeah. it is it's a full-time yeah. job okay <laughs> mm. um and it, it doesn't help that it was like literally her young adult novel and then this one and I'm like oh, it's it's hard because I yeah. there's nothing redeeming about oh, those two no. books and yeah. so uh, it's been it's been hard um it's been fun to do as a buddy read yeah fair. um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know anymore, which makes me really sad. <laughs> That's hard. I feel like she has her niche, and I think, I again, I haven't read Bride yet, but it sounds yeah. like I think she found her niche and she's trying to explore, but, like, maybe she should kind of stick to what she's good at. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd be curious to hear her or see what she can do writing like an adult contemporary romance but like not in the stem world like i feel like she could do that and like expand her horizons a bit yeah you know um i don't know (laughs) i don't know it's yeah it's okay i don't know it's because it's supposed to be like a paranormal romance right Mm. Honestly, it could just be a romance. That's how little fantasy there is. <laughs> Got it. So and you basically, know me. she made the characters like something, but it doesn't yes, really have to do it. with anything. Exactly, gotcha. exactly. And like with me coming from like a fantasy background, like I'm expecting all of this world building. And so mm-hmm. I just had to like lower my expectations because mm-hmm. I'm like, it reads like a contemporary romance with somewhat fantasy elements. Does that make Interesting. sense? Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. <laughs> All right. Not um, said. Yeah. Yeah. What are you reading? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Guys, I I literally took I think multiple weeks to get through this stupid book. It was called When Grumpy Met Sunshine by sorry, I'm looking who it's written by. I don't even care. Uh Charlotte Stein. I rated it two stars. I almost rated it one star, but I felt too mean. Um, but genuinely, like, it took me so long to get through. Yeah. And it was one of those, I literally almost DNF'd it, but again, like, Selena, I couldn't do it. And I mm. pushed through, and it didn't get any better. I literally oh. sent Selena a page of it and was like, if yeah. this shows you anything. Like, it was just poorly written. There wasn't any plot, like... It was so gassed up on the cover and, like, the description and whatever, and it seemed super cute, but then it just wasn't, it it just wasn't that, hmm. and I just, yeah, I just really didn't like it at all. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and, like, crap on it, but it just, yeah. don't read it. Um, <laughs> so I think that's literally the only thing I've read over the past couple weeks because it took me that Whoa. long to get through. Because I literally, Whoa. like, read maybe a chapter a day. Like, I just literally, it was, it was Whoa. so difficult. Um, Whoa. Yeah, I know. But the next book I'm going to read is A Not So Meet Cute by Megan Quinn. And I'm very excited about that because I've heard they're super cute, super spicy. Nice. So... I'm hoping, praying that it will be better than stupid when Grumpy met Sunshine because yeah. I can't. Yeah, it's hard for me to take chances on books now. Like mm-hmm. I think there's so much like there's just like so much out there that mm-hmm. like some people say that it's so good and some people say that it sucks and it's like what really is it? And like again too, it's like do I want to take a chance on it because it's like it's gonna take me weeks. To, exactly. to read it yeah <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what it is um Dang. what are you listening to 
What am I listening to? Nothing great, honestly. I've kind okay. of been in a slump. Um, yeah. But not for long because tomorrow's a big day. But we'll talk about that later. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I'll get out of my slump pretty soon. Oh, you will. Are you, you okay? Will trust. No, I'm not. I'm literally going to listen to it at midnight. I'm, yeah. I don't care. I'm waking up. I'm going to, like, you don't know. That. You don't know. I love that. Um, but I have been listening to Do You Really by Lynn Lapid fe- featuring Ruth B. Oh. Um, she was like a singer on TikTok and she kind of like blew up from there. Well, she, no, I think she blew up before that because she sings that stupid Lost Boys song. No, it's featuring Ruth B. I'm talking about this Lynn girl. Oh, oh. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I know. I know. Ruth B. Flew up way okay, before I was TikTok, like but... that stupid Lost Boy. Never. Yeah. Him, and then a Peter Pan. I hate that song. Oh my like, god. That, you have a that's vendetta a against that... it. No, I do have a vendetta against that song. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but no, no, you're you're fine. But this this um Lynn girl, I think she blew up on TikTok, mm-hmm. and it's this song, which I've I've just been vibing with it. So, cool. but okay. Yeah. What have you been listening to? Um. My playlist this month is kind of lacking, so I don't have a ton. Mm. Um, I've been listening to Dr. Work It Out, which is the Pharrell and Miley Cyrus song. Um, yes. I do like it, but it gets a little bit repetitive. Like, I feel like it's too yeah. long. Like, it's good, yeah. but it could have been, like, cut down a little like, bit. Like, what I've heard on TikTok is enough. Yeah. Like, that's all yeah. that I need. I don't need a lot of it, but it is catchy. Yes. Yes. Um, there's a song called Girl That Was Perfect by Alina Smith. It's okay. It's not like my favorite, but it made it on the playlist. So it's kind of okay. a vibe. Um, and then I've also been listening to Boy Ship by Madison Beer. I kind of like came oh. back along- around to that song and it's kind of a vibe. Like it makes you yeah. feel like a badass. So yeah. Very nice. Mm-hmm. You know, what's so funny. I've been listening yeah. to Bloodstone in the car. It's just so much fun. I... No. Honestly? I know. His runs and the, I, in the last chorus are insane. I know. <laughs> Literally, I love that song. You yeah, should listen it, to some of his other it, stuff, too. I'm telling you, yeah. he's so... Australia has it figured out. They have yeah, it figured honestly. out because they love him over there. Yes. You, you need to love him over here, guys. Yeah. It's, it slaps, so... You know what other <laughs> sl- song slaps by him? Because I just have to mention this now before yeah. I go. That song... I think you've played it I definitely for me have. once in college, but mm-hmm. I don't remember it. Okay. Definitely look it up again because it's okay, really okay, good. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Very nice. What are you uh, watching? What am I watching? Oh, um, I realize we switched the order because I'm foolish. Oh my Oops. god, that's totally fine. We're still in this segment. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so I have been watching Avatar, The Last Airbender, the live action. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to my sister for giving me, um, you know, that, um, (laughs) I'm not going to incriminate her on a podcast (laughs) when Netflix is, has that new policy. Okay. Allegedly. 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 Okay. This is not evidence. Okay. (laughs) Um, I'm only two episodes in. Okay. Um. And I love it. I think with shows that are, like, very precious and close to people, Mm -hmm. they can get really defensive when, like, these new versions kind of come out. Mm -hmm. Um, But I like it. I think it's it's supposed to be what it is. It's Avatar. It's for kids. And everyone's, like, I don't know. I feel like everyone's just, like, picking it apart. Um, I will say, though, I think... You know how I feel about live actions. I think sometimes the medium that the show or the movie is made for is Mm -hmm. it's okay to stay that medium. Like, we don't need a live action or we don't need an animated series of something just because. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm kind of wrestling with that. But, like, I think regardless, I think it's – I'm just, like, having fun. Sure. Yeah, I feel like sometimes you just have to, like, take a step back and just enjoy it. Because if you think about it too much, it's just – yeah, so, yeah, so that's been good. And then I'm also watching season 46 of Survivor on okay. live TV. I'm actually nice. watching live TV because I'm too poor 
to go and watch it on Hulu after it airs. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Honestly, though, I think slowly things are going to go back to cable yes, because I think, so I think it's getting so unreasonable now for everyone. Oh, like, 100%. literally, unless yeah. you have tons and tons of money to be able to watch all the shows, it's it's completely unrealistic for what yeah. people can afford so and i think i think with this season of survivor too i mean like i feel like survivor is always so popular that people watch it on live tv but the recent season of bachelor i feel mm. like people are tuning in and it's yeah. like i think once these reality shows start kind of cranking out and get really good content like everyone's just gonna go back to live TV. yeah 100 so. percent. yeah yeah Agreed. anyways what are you <laughs> watching um, I've still been watching Gilmore Girls. I nice. honestly, that show is just so comforting. Like, I feel mm. like that's one of those shows where I just, I think I named it way back when we did an episode about our favorite TV shows. I think yes. I mentioned it. Yeah. It, it's yes. just so good. And it's one of those shows I feel like I can really shut my brain off to because I just love it. And yeah. I'm so invested in the characters, you know? I love that. Um, so I've been watching that. And then Abbott Elementary has started again. So I've been watching <gasps> yes. Abbott Elementary. And honestly, so far, this season isn't my favorite, but I'm hopeful. Yeah. Because I do love the show. And there's still good moments, but it's just not as good as it has been in the past. So Yeah, this is season three, right? Or season two? No. Maybe season four? I don't season, know. Maybe season three. I'm not 100% yeah, sure. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. That makes sense then, yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Are we ready to dive into pop culture? Sure. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Okay, I'll get the bummers out of the way. Okay. Do we want to get the bummers yeah, out of the way? Yeah, let's get the bummers out of the way. Um, yeah, so my first one is that Drake Bell accuses Nickelodeon dialogue coach Brian Peck of sexually abusing him as a child actor. Mm. And I don't know if you've seen, but Investigation Discovery has announced like this new docu, this four-part docu-series called Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Mm. And um, Bell will be telling his story on that. I think it's set, his episode is set to premiere on March 17th. Um, but Brian Peck was convicted in 2004 of his crimes against Drake in order to register as a sex offender then. Um, wow. I, I just, <laughs> I, you, we've talked about this before with kids. Yeah. It's like a hard, hard no hands off for me. But the thing is, is that I think this is a long time coming, especially with like Jeanette McCurry or that's how you say her name, right? McCurdy. Yeah. Yes, with her, like, her kind of truth and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel now that, like, it's all just going to – it's going to keep – it's not going to stop. It's going to keep coming out. You well, know what I mean? so many old Disney stars have podcasts now that I see yes. clips of all the time on TikTok yes. talking about things, and they're still, like – What's her name? Annalise Vanderpool. I see her specifically a lot on TikTok. Yeah. And people are starting to get annoyed with her because they're like, just tell the tea, but tell the tea. But I'm pretty sure she still has some sort of mm -hmm. NDA. Yep. And so it's always that hard, that hard balance. And yeah, it's just sad to see this happening again. And I'd have to look into it more, but I'm pretty sure Drake Bell, I'm not sure if the charges were dismissed or whatever, but I think him specifically, I think he was convicted of talking to a minor as well yep and so yes, if you really it it's hard because you always hear how like the cycle repeats itself and yes i feel like that's just an example of it and it's it's horrible. It's that's horrible. literally that's literally what I thought when he was announced on this mm -hmm. docu series. I'm like, oh my god, I remember that one time all the way back then, blah, blah blah, where he blew up. I think it happened in like Mexico or whatever because yeah, it was out of the United yeah. States, and it just like explains so much because I'm like, who? No, no one was protecting any of these kids mm -mm. on these sets, and it's just so so heartbreaking. So yeah, um, I've um, yeah. One cool thing I've seen that's kind of in that same vein, Allison yeah. Stoner, who is in like a ton of yes. movies and shows that we all know, like Cheaper yes. by the Dozen, Camp Rock, like mm -hmm. just in tons of different things. She has been doing a lot with legislation to protect like yes. child actors and things like that. And so yeah. 
that's super cool i think to see these people that like we grew up with like trying to actually like make a difference for kids now because you're never not going to have child actors right like that's never going to happen but it's like how do we do that while still protecting them you know yeah so yeah definitely yeah yeah all right my second pop culture that's a little bummer (laughs) um (laughs) is some queer eye news so the first one is that Bobby Bark has officially been replaced by Jeremiah Brent for season nine mm. of the Queer Eye show on Netflix. That's number one. Number two is that JVN, um, Jonathan Van Ness, has been labeled, quote unquote, a monster and a nightmare in this like new bombshell, like Rolling Stone article that was just released, I want to say like last week. Like it's been mm-hmm. really recent. Um, and so... I have a bunch of different quotes from the article because I want to make sure that I'm, like, getting all of this right. But just as a quick, quick overview, if no one has heard of it, um, Jonathan Van Ness has been accused of being emotionally abusive and having, quote, rage issues on the set of Queer Eye, which has allegedly played an integral role in the Fab Five's rift. A number of production sources claimed that making the show was difficult due in part to the popular hairstylist behind the scenes behavior. Uh, Van Ness was described by production sources as someone, quote, terrible to work with. According to one person close to the situation, the issues involving the Queer Eye star have been going on for quite some time and have created Mm -hmm. rifts and awkwardness between Van Ness and his co-stars. Um, a source says that some of the cast and crew of Queer Eye have felt that Van Ness had had a sense of entitlement for quite some time. It has caused tension and awkwardness among them. They feel as though Jonathan can be quick to react in a negative way if something doesn't go their way or as planned. Some of those who have worked with Jonathan have felt intimidated by Jonathan and, like, JVN is difficult to work with. Mm. Here's the thing, Okay. There's a lot of sources, right? All these production assistants, blah, 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 right? There are no names. And I I don't want to um, minimize or excuse their experiences, right? But it's, I think, what is very... We know what the media does. Yes, exactly, right? Um, But I think it's also very telling that Bobby has exited. And I Mm -hmm. think that is all I need to know of what that dynamic is for Mm -hmm. the um, Queer Eye cast. And I Mm -hmm. think even without these quotes and this article about JVN, I already knew something was up because Bobby left. Like, that is already a big action in itself. Like, it doesn't need any words to describe because Bobby left. No, 100%. And I think this is just goes to show, like, People just want to keep making money because the whole point of Queer Eye is like how the five of them, I mean, this is not the point of Queer Eye, but like people are so engaged in watching because of like the bond of the five and like the interviews and like things like that. And so when you try to replace someone, it's just not the same. And so, yeah, I think the fact that Bobby left, Bobby out of all of them says something it says so so much yeah and it's interesting because i think jonathan van ness has also found himself on hot water on tiktok because he made a video about um talking about the election and like Uh wanting people to vote for biden to block trump but like Mm -hmm. you guys should just go watch the video because i don't want to talk out of turn but like it it's kind of concerning and I can see why it landed him on hot water because yes. it's basically yes. like making excuses for certain things. So yeah. I think go watch it for yourself, form your yeah. own opinion about it. But yeah, yeah, I am. Um, it's unfortunate because I know. Yeah, I really I really loved Queer Eye on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I think I was so endeared to them mm-hmm. with the first couple of seasons, but because I've canceled my Netflix subscription, I, I obviously am not watching the new season. Yeah. Um, but I've also just kind of fell off as well. Um, yeah. And it makes me really sad. So. Yeah. Um, okay, this is my last bummer news, I okay. promise. <laughs> um, Paula Abdul sues Nigel Lyth- Lythgo. I don't know how to say his last name. I thought you were about to say she died. I was like, what? No, no. I the icon like, oh could God, never. Was like, queen could never. Um. <laughs> But she sues him for alleged sexual assault. Mm -hmm. 
um, this was crazy to me um, because I grew up on American Idol and mm-hmm. Paula and um, and also Nigel too because I also watched So You Think You Can Dance. But um, Nigel was a producer on American Idol, but most people know him as a judge on So You Think You, mm. so you, Think you Can Dance, but he was also a producer for that show. Um, but Abdul, who was the original, one of the original Idol judges um, from 2009 to from 2002 to 2009, I can't read, okay? (laughs) Um, It claimed that Nigel sexually assaulted her during one of the show's early seasons. Mm. He allegedly did again during Abdul's tenure on dance, which Mm. spanned 24 episodes between 2013 and 2016. Mm. And she is claiming that Nigel verbally assaulted and belittled her in a meeting about the idol job in 2001 and called her a has-been mm. the sweet the sweet the suit alleges of dueled was paid less than her male peers and sexually was sexually assaulted a few years into the job so this is still developing i think nigel has responded i don't mm. i I didn't look into his response, but basically he's saying that like, I don't, none of these are true. Um, so again, it's still, still developing, but it came as a surprise to me that this came out of nowhere. I know. I think it's so hard because I think as people are talking more about these things, it's like these things from the past are getting brought up Mm -hmm. and it's so difficult because I think from a legal standpoint, I wonder it's always hard to see like what are they gonna do about it since it's not current like yeah. how are they gonna find the evidence they need to like yeah. actually like go through with the lawsuit and things like that but i mean yeah i don't know it it was surprising that it it did kind of feel like it came out of nowhere but again there's never a good time to talk about your trauma so yeah i i agree i 100 like, percent agree <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you decide you want to talk about it, you get to talk about it. So yes, exactly. If this exactly. felt like the right time, sue his ass. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. That is the end of my bummer news. What What do you have? <laughs> okay. So the biggest one I want to talk about is, uh-huh. have you seen the drama with the Cyrus family? Oh my god, Dione, there's, I went down a rabbit hole on yeah. Reddit last night. Yeah, there's a it's whole horrific. crazy, <sighs> it, it, it's going deep. So we already knew there was some sort of rift going on because Tish Cyrus, so Miley Cyrus's mom, hmm. got married to Dominic Purcell, who's an actor, and hmm. noticeably like Noah Cyrus, Billy Ray Cyrus, and I think a couple of their other siblings were not at the wedding. And so everyone is kind of like, oh, there must be some drama going on here. Yes. So we already yeah. knew there was something going on on top of Billy Ray and Tish getting a divorce and then Billy Ray getting married to a way younger woman who he had met mm-hmm. on the set of Hannah Montana. Mm-hmm. So already a lot of questionable stuff going on. Now the biggest thing is Noah Cyrus, Miley Cyrus's sister, um, allegedly was dating or having a relationship with Dominic Purcell before Mm -hmm. he ended up getting with her mom, Tish, and then now Mm -hmm. they're married. Mm -hmm. And so supposedly this is causing the rift in their family. So basically Tish stole the guy from her daughter, Mm -hmm. which is disgusting I don't I know down... what the truth is, to be honest, yeah. but it's yeah. crazy. I went down a, a Reddit rabbit hole, as I said, um, and people were doing timelines of it. Oh, boy. And they were saying that it, with with how close the wedding was to when mm-hmm. they started talking over, right, because Tish went on Call Her Daddy mm. to talk about, you know, how they came about and blah, 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 and it was like an Instagram DM and all this stuff, right? So if you want to listen to her side of the story, yeah. she tells it on Call Her Daddy. Um, but with that, too, they were trying to figure out how this all happened so close to each other. Mm-hmm. And people are thinking or predicting that it somewhat overlapped, that he was, like, still with Noah while he was talking to Tish. Mm. And that's so fucked up. That's so messed up. Why, why would... I'm sorry, but, like, at the end of the day, why would Trish, Tish even go there at all, ever? I know. I know. Okay, also, do you guys know how old he is? He's old, you guys. 
Do you know how old Noah is? Young. She's like 24. She's too young for that. Ugh. I. <sighs> yeah. You know. Yeah. I. I have tried so hard in my life to understand large age gaps. And yes, people yeah. can do whatever they want. Yeah. But I still personally I can't come around to it. It just it, it it just feels gross whether it's an older yeah. woman with a younger guy or mm-hmm. um an older guy with a younger woman like it yeah. just feels gross. Like and then whenever I start thinking about these things, I always my mind always goes to Aaron Taylor Johnson. Stop it. That Don't. was this whole it's it's just it just it's just feels gross every time, most of the time. Do you see his birthday post to her? No, I didn't, but I don't <laughs> want to. Do I? Okay. Um. Yeah. No. I. I think either way, the way that you said it, it's like older guy, younger white. Either way, mm-hmm. no for me. It's a no, no. for me. Like no. I can't. I just. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. This Cyrus stuff like, is like. And I always crazy. think about. It. If I showed up to any family event with, like, a 45, 50-year-old yes. man, yeah. everyone around me would be like, are you okay? Like, the, yeah. like it's not... No, not are many you okay. To, see to go for a grandpa. Yes! Okay? Oh, my God, no, you're like, so no. right. You're so right. It's, it's not are you okay. It's, like, are I need to okay? talk to this person. Yeah. Yes, I need to talk to this person. Because, mm-hmm. like, now that I'm getting older, I'm like, this is not okay okay this is not okay no like (sighs) no yeah so anyways the cyrus family is in the trenches right now they really are yeah Yeah. miley's calling it though love her yeah Uh, Yeah. um and then the only other pop culture thing that i have and it's a pretty Mm -hmm. small one Lindsay lohan finally confirmed the freaky friday sequel so her and jamie lee curtis um, yes. and it's really cute because jamie lee curtis and Lindsay lohan have kept in touch all these years apparently and that's yeah. just so sweet because obviously Lindsay lohan has gone through so much and jamie lee curtis is yeah. known for like standing up for people in the media saying whatever yeah. she wants and like i just think that's really cool that they yeah. still have that relationship yeah i'm super super excited i mean Me too. Again, with live actions and remakes, you know my feelings on it. But I will take it as they come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, two quick things from my end on pop culture that are not bummers, okay? okay. So the, fir- the first one is that Ray had a historic night yes. at the Brits Awards. Yes. Because her album, My 21st Century Blues, won six brits and honestly i'm just so so happy for her like that's amazing she's independent she left her label she was very very vocal about that and it's wild too because she went to say that this album that won her six brits she said that it was just gathering dust at her record label and it's crazy that they just like wouldn't let her release it and she was only able to release it when she left them she's really really cool and she's amazing live like i think i think this night i mean she's already been growing in popularity and had a couple Mm -hmm. of big songs but i think it's gonna just she's gonna blow up yeah also she's just an amazing vocalist if you guys haven't listened to her she is her runs are insane (laughs) (laughs) um okay and then my last one is that the first look of The Idea of You, starring Anne Hathaway and the love of my life, Nicholas Goutzine, finally released. Do you have thoughts on it? Like, what are what are he, we feeling? He's so fun. He's so <laughs> fun. Literally, whether he is playing a gay character, a straight character, yeah. Yeah. an otherwise character, it doesn't yeah. matter. I want him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just I don't blame Anne. Is. Like I, I no, get it, girl. <laughs> honestly, honestly, and Anne is so beautiful that like oh I, gosh. I feel like it's just like, yeah, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, you know. Yeah, like, uh, I. But you know I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I don't care if it's yeah. some stupid Wattpad movie. Yeah. I, I honestly don't care because I think it's going to be one of those that's not objectively like the most fantastic cinema, but I think it's mm-hmm. going to be good. 
and yeah. like cheesy and good. Oh, I I agree. It better be I hot. Am, <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, I, I bet. I bet it will be. Yeah. I am here for Amazon Prime continuing to make fake bands for me yeah. to be obsessed with. Uh-huh. Like they're this fake band in this movie, yeah. I'm gonna be obsessed with 100%. the same way that I was obsessed with Daisy Jones. <laughs> like 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 carry on amazon i am here for it i'm not gonna i'm not gonna convince you otherwise yeah yeah exactly (laughs) um but yeah that's all that i have sweet all right selena do you want to tell everyone what we'll be talking about today yes speaking of amazon prime Mm -hmm. we will be talking about the newest original amazon prime movie called Upgraded, starring Camila Mendes, which um, I think it came out like early February, Mm -hmm. and it is a romantic comedy movie. Mm -hmm. So basically how we're going to do it, we're going to go over some overall thoughts first, and then, or kind of like little things we want to talk about, and then we're going to talk about a few things that we would change if we were directing or producing the movie. Yes. Yep. Um, so I'll just start with one of my overall thoughts. They're oh, do we want to do of... like a summary or a synopsis of the movie? Oh, sure. Or yeah. Was... Go for oh, it. Oh, okay. Cool. I just have I copied and pasted it from Amazon. Great. Um... Love it. <laughs> okay. Um, do you say Anna or Anna? I say Anna because that's how they pronounce it in the movie, but it's spelled okay. like Anna. Yes. Oh my God. Thank you. I, I was so confused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Anna is an ambitious intern dreaming of a career in the art world while trying to impress her demanding boss, Claire. When she's upgraded to first class on a work trip, she meets handsome Will, who mistakes Anna for her boss. A white lie that sets off a glamorous chain of events, romantic and opportunity, until her fib threatens to surface. So. So. Yeah. Cool. All (laughs) righty. Um. First thing I have to talk about is Anna's best friend from the very beginning. I honestly, I don't remember what her name is. I really don't. don't. She had the Irish accent. She did have the Irish accent, which was kind of cool, but it threw me up. Irish accents, when they're thick, are hard to understand. Um, So I really had to focus. Um, But I think she was a little over the top sometimes, but very cute. And, like, I Mm. think I really liked her character because – It felt like the stereotypical best friend in every single rom-com you watch. Like, they're quirky. They're a little goofy. Like, they tell you what you want to hear. Like, they're, they call, I don't know. It just, it felt very stereotypical. Um, And I think her wardrobe reflected that really well. But it wasn't so over the top where I was like, oh my gosh. Because I swear every quirky character has to wear, like, super ugly, weird clothes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that doesn't mean you're quirky, but, like, whatever you want. (laughs) And they have to be quirky okay <laughs> yeah literally like shove it down our throats but no yeah. i felt like i i just liked her character in general it's interesting because i didn't really care for her character like i think i think she was just a stepping stone in anna's mm-hmm. character arc which i yeah it makes sense right like yeah. that's the role of a best friend in the romantic comedy genre mm-hmm. um but yeah no i just like i i I just thought that she was just another character there. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, Felt cool. Felt kind of so. indifferent about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Um, my first overall thought is that Camila Mendez will be the new Zoe Deutsch. Because she mm. can have chemistry with a wall and I'd watch it. You're right. I think, I think her acting is so authentic. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so refreshing in mm-hmm. what we're getting. Like, I was rooting for her the entire time Mm -hmm. during the film but also i think that attributes to the way that she is just so authentic like i truly wholeheartedly believe that camila mendez was anna like that like they are one and the same like i just i don't know how she does it no it's crazy she's a really good actress and i actually had that thought while i was watching the movie where i was like and maybe she has and i just don't know about it but i feel like she could be like a serious like a really good actress if she was mm-hmm. given roles that were like more serious or dramatic yes. like, i feel like she could yes. really do it all like, if she wanted to and got the opportunity to do it um but so far people know her from like this i think another yeah. rom-com and like riverdale riverdale so i yeah. don't feel like she's been given the material but i feel like she could really do it i feel like she could be an emma stone because emma mm. stone has that authenticity that it's like it's so natural and so believable that you're just like captured by it i feel like if camila 
was like given those roles she could easily take the same path as ama yeah no i you're so right so yeah. i really hope i really hope to see her career <laughs> blow up because yeah, yeah. she deserves she, it she so. does she does yeah. um okay my second overall thought which i i feel like you're either gonna agree with me or disagree uh-huh. But William, obviously the main guy, uh-huh. he was it for me the minute he started talking. I don't know if it was wait what like, wait really you didn't like, like him did like, you no no like it as in like he, it was doing it for you like you, he was yeah, doing it one hundred percent like I thought he was a jerk but I was like you're a jerk with a British accent and you're really cute <laughs> like I yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're you're so funny because that's literally my second thought <laughs> my my second overall thought because. Theonia, I was convinced you would hate him. <gasps> I <laughs> okay, but here's I was the thing. convinced you. I I think at the beginning I I wanted to hate him because he was being okay. such a jerk. But okay. here's the thing: as it went on, there are all these things happening that I was like, "Oh, I love you." I think like <laughs> um, he uh, the accent he teaches ki- kids soccer. Yes. Like, you, if you guys have been listening to podcasts or know me as a person, you know the minute I see you with a kid, like like I'm here. Yeah. Like yeah. I like that. That's all yeah. I need. Yeah. Um, and the way he tried to pursue her was so like he he tried to make plans with her. He tried. Mm-hmm. She was kind of being a bit of a hoe about it, but like also fair. She uh, she yeah, was doing definitely. her job. Like she yeah, she exactly. needed to do what she needed to do. But yep. I love that he pursued her. I'm a sucker for that golden retriever energy, yeah. you know? Um, also, their first kiss, when he, like, she started to walk away, and then he pulled her back in, and then they kissed that. Now that's honestly, that was Honestly, hot. it was a little, it, it, the acting felt a little stilted for me in that scene, mm-hmm. but hand placement is what got me. <laughs> Acting zero out of ten. Oh. Hand placement ten, 10 out, out of 10. ten. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think that men need to. Some some woman out there should put together a compilation of like in film and media where there are good hand placement moments and they should yes. learn because yes. there is nothing that melts a girl faster than good hand placement oh yeah really honestly like <laughs> oh gosh yeah someone that's... said we need the female gaze hand yeah like that's, that's <laughs> hand that here yeah and here um but yeah no it's so funny because i thought you were going to hate him I think I am biased because I know Archie Renault. I think that's what his, mm. what his real name is. I know him from Shadow and Bone. So oh, I didn't know that. I was, I was already biased because I <laughs> love him. I love him. And I was like, oh, my God, he's in this movie. And literally, I just love him so much. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I was just intrigued to hear your yeah. thoughts. And I'm so happy we're on the same page. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Um, okay, so this one is, like, pretty broad for my overall thought, but I really loved the stakes in this movie. I mm. think it felt more dire than something in, like, Anyone But You. Mm. But I think that's because the movie really, really focused on Anna's motive and her situation and her character arc and all of that stuff. Um, and I think that's why it felt so dire, but I I really appreciated it. Mm. I have other comments in a different section, but that's all that I'm going to say. Okay, and that kind of leads into my next point of, like, Mm, I feel like the biggest plot point that set up the stakes that you were talking about is her lie about being the art director to William. And I I guess maybe I wasn't watching close enough, and you can answer this for me, but I didn't feel like she had a big enough reason in the moment to lie about it and then continue this whole lie. But I I see what they were trying to do. So I guess I don't, I don't really understand why she lied in the moment. Um, so remember she was like three or four drinks in, like she was already drunk. She had a bloody Mary. She had two champagne glasses. Like she was already so far gone. So I took it as, 
like a hee hee ha ha funny let me lie because i'm drunk Mm -hmm. i'm never gonna see him again it's Mm -hmm. fine and then it didn't happen but that's the way that i explained it gotcha okay yeah i could see that um okay my next one Mm -hmm. um random but i really loved will's mom i thought she was super cute um i will say by the end of the film i was like oh, I see why Will wants to, like, get out of the social circle Mm -hmm. and the art scene. It did feel a little weird that she was so overbearing um, to Anna immediately, but I was like, you know what, Let me. I'll just vibe with it. So I'll get my comments (laughs) on that later. Okay, Um, perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My next thing, so Marissa Tamai was Claire, who is the art director. I love her. Yes. Um, I, I feel like... This sounds bad, but I almost felt like she was too good of actress for this movie or something, but not oh, necessarily. Yeah. But either way, I felt like she did really good. Like, kind of like Camila Mendes is Anna. I felt like she really embodied the role and I believed her yeah. and her accent. I feel like sometimes people who don't have that accent do an accent and it sounds so annoying and like yeah. fake. But hers, I felt, sounded very authentic, um, and I really liked her. Yeah. I think she was, like, the big name to draw people in. Mm. So I think you're right that, like, it was – this was, like, too small of a movie for her, but I think she was, like, the main star power Mm -hmm. to bring people in because they see her name and they're like, oh, yes, I know who she is. Yeah, that's Like, I'm going to watch this movie. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um – Literally, this comment is just, Will coaching soccer, question mark? My heart exploded. <laughs> Which I know we already talked about, but that's just one of my overall thoughts. I, <laughs> an important overall thought. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> um, okay. So, I just have to mention the scene where Will and Anna got into their big fight. Okay? It pissed me off. I feel like yeah. it, I think it, it felt realistic in the sense that like we've all been there where it's like we're so mad at ourselves mad at our situation nothing's going right so we explode and just say things we don't mean which is Mm -hmm. i think what happened but again i think camille mendez did such a good job acting it because i was like wow you are being so rude and so mean right now when she was basically like yay you got a job in new york but what about me it's like you're totally taking away from the you know yeah. um and i just yeah i it it was a lot it was a lot it it made me sad because okay let's take this out of a movie context and mm-hmm. let's put it in real life right someone is so excited to tell you about something that happened to them that's so big like it's so life changing mm-hmm. and all you can do is yell at them and like spiral again I, I understand her reasoning for why she was yelling, why she was spiraling, X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z. It was not fair to take it out on him, though. Like, no. I think that was uh, such an overstep on Agreed. her. Yeah. Okay, again, just, see, you know, these are just, like, my random thoughts. They're not mm-hmm. really overall thoughts, so. Um, speaking of Will, um, I thought it was really hot when <laughs> Anna <laughs> needed a dinner reservation for Claire. And she couldn't get it. And then Will was like, hand it over. He that was gets so on the acts phone. of service. He, he gets on the phone and he's like, hey, it's Will. You can get me a reservation, right? So, yeah. You know what? You're right. It was acts of service. And that's why I found so, it so hot. So good. So good. Oh. Love him. Yeah. Love him. <laughs> um, this is also kind of just a random thought. Um, yeah. When... Claire and Anna kind of had their thing where Anna got fired from the job. Claire, I thought, did a really good job of calling her her out. Um, like she said, it's yeah. not an accident. You lied. Because, yeah. and again, I actually feel like this movie did a really good job of, even though it's a rom-com and whatever, a lot of the situations were so relatable where it's like, yes. you feel so stuck. You're, like, fighting for your life. So you say, it was an accident. But, like, yes. we all know it wasn't an accident. And I'm glad yeah. that, like, Claire called her out on that. Um, yeah. And then when Claire said to Anna, you're a huge waste of potential, I was like, oh, that yeah. hurts that hurts yeah yeah i that was a lot that, that one hurt me that yeah one hurt that hurt me. me too i was like yeah claire oh 
oh yeah. my gosh <laughs> but no I think again why that scene worked so well is because mm-hmm. they were both so authentic like it was yeah. so believable that like yeah. I I, ju- I was just like oh my gosh like this feels so uncomfortable which is like the whole point of it you yeah. know 100 um, percent. yeah um okay my last overall thought which is like more of a random thought um again talking about you know like Camila's like authentic acting mm-hmm. on that stuff when she talked to like the concierge after her first kill kiss with Will was so cute I just felt like so believable like something that someone would do in real life like that's just so like you you're just so giddy that you just have to tell someone <laughs> like <laughs> I thought it was adorable so yeah um I have a few more I'll just go okay. through them quickly yeah um I think it it was very interesting because I said I don't have an alternative in mind for how else I would do this mm-hmm. um but she I think Anna gained confidence so fast when she went in there with Will's mom and took over and whatever she gained mm-hmm. so like so confidence or she gained confidence so fast and then fired Gerard like just right then and there <laughs> yeah. and like I loved watching it but it felt like such a quick turnaround I was like whoa mm-hmm. you like whatever and again mm-hmm. she played it very well but I was like oh yeah. wow that was very fast but again, I don't have an alternative, and I feel like that's what yeah. made sense for the moment, and I think it yeah. worked. But okay, yeah. when Anna basically first goes back to Will to try to kind of get him back or whatever, I really liked that he didn't just fold immediately. Yes! I felt like that was yes. needed. <clears throat> yes. Because, again, it made it realistic. Like, they really haven't known each other that long. Like, yes! It, this is kind of, she lied to you basically about everything the minute you met her. Like, that's a huge red flag. Um, and when when Will said to Anna, he said, you were awful to me when things weren't going your way. And, like, I think, yeah, I don't know. Again, it just felt really realistic. I think yeah. he was very respectful about it. But, yeah. man, Honestly, this is, like, the most, the most accurate representation of, like, how a relationship could go with, like, good, good good-ish communication and, like, realistic decision-making. Yeah. Like, 100%. I was, I was Team Will at the end. I was like, no, you're you're right. right. She was shitty. Literally, she was. (laughs) Crazy. Yeah. So, just my last overall thought. Yeah. The six-month time jump, that kind of threw me for a loop. I was expecting something, but then all of a sudden mm-hmm. in six months, she's already achieved her huge goal of having a gallery. Again, felt a little quick. I yeah. think it made sense to wrap up her storyline and, like, Will coming back and things like that, but it it kind of felt just a little flat for me because, one, it was so fast, and then all of a sudden Will comes back, and all of a sudden, he's kind of changed his mind about things. But it doesn't really say what got him to change his mind about things. All of a sudden, he was just like, I, I'm i here and I want to be with you. But it didn't say, like, why he changed his mind after he kind of, like, pushed back. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more on that in our next section. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that's, so that's all, all I have. Um, do nice. we want to just talk about the ending since we're kind of talking about that already yeah i mean i think the ending though for me is more overall pacing Mm. like that's what i would change sorry our next section is like what we would change yeah sorry guys (laughs) as a refresher um that's what i would change because honestly the beginning was too long Mm. by the time that they were on the plane already it was about 20 25 minutes in and Mm. i'm like whoa 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 like that's i think that's too too long considering the movie's only like 20 minutes or whatever right i think we already got the gist of anna's situation her dire situation already with her freaking brother-in-law yeah chewing her ass out and like that's all that we needed right we we understood anna's situation and then we could have proceeded right Mm -hmm. i just think that we could have shortened that up then we could have extended the middle with more will and anna Mm. connecting versus just making out all those montages of them making out like i wanted more connection right um and then also with the shortened beginning 
you would expand the climax because mm. I felt like it was way too fast yeah. when Will came to her work and then the two other assistants saw and then after she had her argument with Will, she came back in and they're like, you're dead meat. Like, this is it. And then that's when her whole thing is found out and then she's, it's all done. And I was like, it did just go so fast. It's so fast. And I'm yeah. like, why couldn't we, why couldn't we slow down? And then also going into the fact of the ending, mm -hmm. I wish we could... I wish we saw them reconcile more because, again, I loved, loved Will's reasoning of not folding and not um, not uh, dismissing what Anna did so easily. Yeah. But then the six months, I'm like, what changed? Wh yeah. What, what – like, why couldn't we see that? Yeah. I just felt like we gave time – to the movie where it wasn't needed. Like it yeah, needed I get that. It could have just been shifted a little bit and it would have yes! made a big difference. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I hear you. I don't know. Do you have thoughts on that? Like what what um, would you No, I feel the exact same way about it. Yeah. The pacing. Yeah. I didn't know how I wanted to say that, but I think you mm. put it perfectly, which is why yeah. I wrote that at the end of the last section. Um that it just yeah. felt fast. So Yeah, that makes sense. Um my first thing I would change, which is interesting that you mentioned you really like her, was William's mom. I don't yeah. know if it was how the character was written. I don't know if uh -huh. it was how the actress kind of took on the role. But I think compared to some of the other actresses and things, she just felt a bit cheesy or over the top. And I think she just like came on to Anna so fast that it mm. was kind of unbelievable to me that yeah. like all of a sudden – she was helping her and doing all these things for her and whatever. And then yeah. all of a sudden she's like, oh, my third husband, the Russian, like, oh, like, all I, I don't yeah. know. It felt a bit disjointed because I feel yeah. like the woman who has the three husbands is the woman who's like a little more like, I don't know, like stuck up or like whatever. And she was very like low key and like kind and like warm and bubbly. Yeah. And so not that they can't be both, but it was just very... Yeah. I don't know. Something about it wasn't totally believable to me. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I, I took her character almost like a palate cleanser because mm. I feel like everyone was so intense, right? Claire was so intense. Her two assistants who were bitches to Anna, yeah. they were so intense. I felt like everyone was so intense, whereas Will's mom was like, she really gave me like hippie vibes. Yeah, and, yeah. Which is fine. Um, And also, too, I don't know the art space, so like I don't know if that's accurate that they're that way or if they're yeah. they are more stuck up or whatever but i just felt like she was a good palate cleanser for anna sure. to kind of like confide in when everything around her is always so like strict and like unmovable you yeah. know so. okay that makes sense yeah um okay my second thing that i would change i wanted more will and anna time again without them making mm -hmm. out but but i think this is a thing what I was saying earlier before is that I love that this was more of Anna's story mm -hmm. and her character arc and the situation was so dire and I was rooting for her because this was truly her story. I think the romance was really like took a back seat mm. because they prioritize Anna's storyline. Again, totally fine. Uh, but <laughs> part of me wanted more forced yeah. proximity like i think for rom-coms we usually do get forced proximity like mm -hmm. look at set it up look at anyone but you like mm -hmm. they're working together which is how you get forced proximity but like in this sense like will and anna were kind of working together but not really and so it yeah. just i don't know i kind of wanted a bit more but i recognize that you can't have the best of both worlds because mm -hmm. while anyone but you has a i think a pretty solid romance subplot yeah. i think the character arc for both characters were very 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 lacking, lacking. yeah yeah no i totally see what you mean but yeah yes. i think that's one of those things if they want anna's thing to be the main thing of the movie i think again yeah. maybe a couple more scenes of them really talking about things or whatever yeah would have fixed that you know yeah but again it know. all bleeds into each other with the pacing because yeah <sighs> <So anyways>, yeah <laughs> um my next one which is also okay. 
kind of just hitting on something you said before. I okay. thought the conversation with the bellman was just kind of weird. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It just felt like, again, I guess, like, I agree with what you're saying. Like, it was just cheesy yeah. and it's relatable when you feel giddy. You just, like, have yeah. to tell someone. But it just felt like a little, I don't know. I was just like, oh, I no, I remember what really bothered me about it. It's when she was like, I just made out with a solid 10. Like, that oh, was just a bit. Oh, yeah. Like, you yeah. didn't have to say it like that. That yeah. just took me out a little. I was like, That makes really? sense. Honestly, honestly, if we go back to our first change that mm -hmm. we talked about, I would cut that scene out and replace it with Anna and Will or something yeah. something more that that um hits, yeah. that, like, furthers their relationship more. Whereas I think this scene, yes, it was cute. I did like it was cute and it was realistic. But if I had to pick, I would choose Will and Anna's interaction over that scene. Yeah. No, good point. Good point. Yeah. Um, okay, my last thing that I would change. Um, I wanted to see Camila Mendes dressed in more flashy stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they played the the fact that she's like poor as shit, but she's gorgeous. And all the dresses that she wore were from her boss. So I feel like that could have been an easy segue to, like, have better dresses because it's her boss's dresses mm -hmm. versus just a regular black dress. Like, multiple times. Fair. Multiple times. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? I hear you, but I think the dresses were so perfect that it didn't bother me so much. And also, I think if... It, the dresses i think you're right though they could have had more fun with it because claire's yes! style was a little it, bit cooler yes, so it wouldn't exactly. have been so far off exactly yeah like that's why it felt so like just disconnected for me plain. because it's like you're telling me this is your boss's dress like mm -hmm. i don't think claire would ever wear that like yeah. multiple black dresses in a row i mean i love the silhouette on some of them but i was just like could we do a different color yeah we maybe? could have a little more like, fun with it yeah I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last kind of thing I would change. Um, so obviously she was living with her sister and her sister's husband, Ronnie. There's this whole little like small subplot about him being like, you could just quit being an artist and go work at the Navy or work in Absolutely the Navy. Not. And I just don't. That just seems so random and so uh -huh. bizarre. Like. Just because you don't do art doesn't mean you have to join the military. Like, I know. what? I wonder like, if it was a placement. Mm, mm -hmm. You think? Because they do, they do a lot of placements for Marvel movies, too. Interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, you might be right. Because mm -hmm. then even she got the text showing the plane taking off. Yes! Like, from Ronnie. Yes! And I was like, are we really still on this Navy thing? Yes, if exactly. that's the only other option? Like, we're taking precious time to show this Navy video where we could, where instead we could be furthering Will and mm. Anna's relationship. Like, I think it was a placement. Interesting. I hadn't which thought is, about it like that, but that's such a good point. Which is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I'm right? like convinced you're right. I'm convinced no, you're it, right. No, they do it all the time with Marvel, Marvel movies. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. Wow. But overall, yeah. I think I like the movie. I did. Yes. I think, of yes. course, there's things I changed. There's a few things I didn't love. Yeah. But, like, I honestly was pleasantly surprised because I kind of went into it thinking this is going to be a stupid rom-com that's not going to hit because I have very high expectations. But, like, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah. Like, yeah. I enjoyed like, watching I... it. It was chill. Me too. It, it, was, it was nice. Yeah. It was nice. So. <laughs> um, well, Selena, you want to tell our audience what we will be talking about next week? <laughs> yeah. Well, in... In two weeks, we will be talking <laughs> two weeks. about... Two sorry. <laughs> in two weeks, we will be talking about Ariana Grande's newest album, Eternal Sunshine, which I feel like I have been waiting for so long for this. Like, I, I was like, girl, he was busy with life. Wicked. Like, I understand, but, like, I need to be fed, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I'm very excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> I literally... Oh my god. <laughs> the promo's been killing me. I've been yes, listening to same. Yes And. The music video for Yes And. If you guys haven't watched it and you're not a fan of Yes And, go watch the video because I guarantee it'll at least give you a different appreciation for the song. Because the music video oh, yeah. is so cool and so yeah. thought out. And there's so many Easter eggs in it. Oh my god. Yeah. 
Okay, sorry. I'll I'll save it for next time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye.